Recently, we watched a movie called The Captain and thoroughly enjoyed it for its excellent performances and cinematography. Now, before we go too far, just in case you've not heard of it, here's the blurb for the movie so you know what it's all about. Germany, 1945. Soldier Willy Herald a deserter of the German army, stumbles into a uniform of a Nazi captain abandoned during the last and desperate weeks of the Third Reich. Newly emboldened by the allure of a suit that he has stolen only to stay warm, Willie discovers that many Germans will follow the leader, whoever he is. Before we go too much further, beware that there are one or two spoilers ahead for the movie if you haven't seen it yet. Now, like I said, the movie is excellent and the story is quite chilling. But what gave us a real surprise was the postscript at the end of the movie. It comes up just before the credits explaining that it was based on a true story. And when you see what Harold got away with, it's almost unbelievable that this was a real thing that happened. Harold was indeed a real person, and was the German equivalent of a lance corporal, and in 1944 was involved in action in Anzio and Monte Cassino in Italy. It was in March 1945, when Harold's unit was retreating from the Netherlands back to Germany, when he got separated from his unit. On his journey back, just as we see in the movie, he came across an abandoned and shot up military car, inside of which he found the uniform of a highly decorated Luftwaffe captain. He put on the uniform, started calling himself Captain Herald of the 6th Parachute Division, and proceeded to fake and bluff his way into a number of war crimes. He would say he was on a special mission from the Fuhrer, and remarkably, he only got asked to provide identification on two occasions. As he made his way across the country, other soldiers joined him. He initially had four, which then grew to a core group of 12, and he even had as many as around 60 at various points. He tried to engage in combat with the Allies on a couple of times, But it was after this that his focus turned internally, specifically onto other military personnel that had deserted and the general populace that were unfortunate enough to get in its way. As we see in the movie, at the Aschendorf Moor prison camp, he was asked by one of the camp supervisors to pass judgment on 30 prisoners as the camp was overpopulated and the commanders were struggling to maintain control. Harold ended up shooting all 30 of them, and then started executing his way through a list of 400 political prisoners before the camp was destroyed by Allied bombing. But that wasn't the end for Harold. He assembled a group of 12 men, and together they went on a rampage through the countryside terrorising the townsfolk they came across, randomly killing farmers and executing people that they claimed were spies. All of what I just described happened in a period of just under one month. The German military police finally caught up with him on the 30th of April 1945 and he was sent to trial to answer for the things that he'd done. He was, however, let off and sent to a special battalion before once again deserting. Now, of course, they do show this in the movie, but what happened in reality is slightly different. In the movie, they show him escaping from the courthouse, running away, and then slowly walking into a forest. The postscript that comes up on screen fills us in with the rest of the story. He falsified a soldier's paybook in order to obtain discharge documents. And then, once out of the army, he took up work as a chimney sweep. Not long after, though, on the 23rd of May 1945, he was arrested by Allied forces for stealing bread, and it was discovered that he was a former soldier, and his war crimes came to light. 
He and six of his accomplices were beheaded months later. Now, I don't know, for me, it seems in a horrible way, of course, that this is a really amazing story. It's incredible to me that he got away with this for so long. It's really a testament to the absolute chaos that went on in those closing months and weeks of the war. The movie is well worth tracking down, and the deeper story is somewhat morbidly fascinating.